Sure, you've seen a review or two for 2005's Dark Water, but have you ever seen a review by an actual maintenance man? Reviewer by night. Let's review Dark Water. Dark Water stars Jennifer Connelly, Doug Ray Scott, John C. Riley, and is directed by Walter Salas. What's up, guys? It's patron request review time. If you are of a certain tier, uh, then you can request a review in your honor. This one is for Bronson Wright Wolf. Um, he has a list of movies he wants me to do month to month, and uh, starting with 2005's Dark Water. So be sure to become a Drum Dumbs patron. A lot of fun stuff over there. We've got a great community. Uh, exclusives, uh, stuff that you will not get on the uh, the main channel, uh, live hangouts, and of course, uh, of a certain tier, you get a review in your honor. And let me just say, my patrons have introduced me to some movies that had I not had a patron account, I guess, I might have never known about these movies, you know, or might have never even thought to review them. And I've actually found some great films through my patrons, so I can't thank you guys enough. And you keep me afloat. Speaking of float, we're going to review Dark Water. Now, this is an Asian film remake. Is it a, a Japanese film? It may be a J-horror film, okay? And it only came out, I think, like three years before this movie. But first off, let's give you a quick plot synopsis. Uh, Jennifer Connelly plays Dahlia. She's a recently divorced uh, mother. Uh, her child is Ceci. And, you know, when you get a divorce, oftentimes one party gets the house. Sometimes both parties, they just sell the house because they can't afford to make the payments. And that's the situation here. Uh, they, they live in New York. Rent is extremely expensive in uh, New York. So they have to split off. And my God, when I heard what the rent was going to be for her for this apartment, in 2005, it was $900 uh, a month. Now, to me, even today, I think that's pretty low. If you could find a, a decent apartment for $900 a month these days, then you're not living in uh, Orlando, Florida. I'll tell you that right now. Okay, you guys know rent, it's, it gets higher and higher every year. And this movie should tell you that. And by the way, this is another one of those freaking like real estate horror movies, right? I, I talked about this recently with another movie that I did. You know, I talked about The Crow, how that's got a little bit to do with real estate. But you got like movies I didn't even mention, like Pacific Heights. Uh, and there could be a whole list of movies that revolve around real estate, you know, horror movies. Pretty interesting stuff. But I digress. Um, long story short, they move into this apartment. Uh, in the bedroom, there is a, a leak, a water leak on the ceiling, and uh, it becomes a nuisance. She's got a landlord played by the great John C. Riley that doesn't really give a shit. She's got a maintenance man played by the late, great Pete Postlewaite. He, he doesn't really give a shit, you know? And this stuff happens. I'm sure... A lot of my audience that rents and lives in apartment complexes, do you have a landlord that just doesn't give a shit and he just wants to like push you aside and then you got like a, a whacked out maintenance team that, that seems like they don't even care? God, I hope not. But the leak, it just gets worse and worse and worse. You know that this is a remake of a J-horror movie, so you know that there's probably some death involved that's causing that leak, but you just don't know why, right? And we don't know when that element of the story is going to present itself. But we do have some backstory set up where when Dahlia was a child, her mother left her and that plays a part in this movie. This movie deals with like um, psychology and you know, I guess being abandoned, abandonment. Those themes are prevalent throughout this whole movie for sure. I mean, hell, you have a child whose parents are getting a divorce. They are going to feel a small sense or even a large sense of abandonment. And that it just permeates throughout this movie beautifully. But as Dahlia starts doing some digging, uh, she finds out that there is this resident that lived above and they left. There are parties that are turning on the water upstairs and it is leaking below, okay? And we don't know if it's a ghost and we don't know if it's actual people that did it, but we do know that nobody lives up there. And there are moments in the movie where she'll go upstairs and she will see somebody and it might not necessarily be real. It could be in Dahlia's head. Dahlia takes medication. 
So that's another element in this movie where you're constantly questioning, is she fully there as it's going along? And, and I love movies like this that constantly keep you guessing. But one more key element in the plot synopsis that I must mention is that the daughter, Ceci, she starts having this imaginary friend by the name of Natasha. This is the first time it has presented itself since she moved into this apartment. And of course, her mother, Dahlia, gets concerned. And quickly it's revealed that the daughter to the couple that left upstairs, her name is Natasha. Is Natasha dead? Is she not dead? Who knows? By the way, guys, I have to talk about spoiler stuff in this review. I I've been very careful right now so far because some of you might not have seen this movie, even though it's a 2005 film. I will say I saw this movie uh, when it first came out, didn't remember any of it at all. And I might not have stayed for the final act. I don't remember what was going on in my life at the time, but for some reason, I just didn't finish the film. Now, I will say, I think the market was getting a little convoluted with these J-horror uh, American movies like The Grudge, um, uh, The Ring. Some good, some not so good like Pulse. So maybe there was just too many of them and maybe that's why I didn't really care too much about dark water i kind of pushed it off but boy am i glad that uh bronson actually asked me to review this film because man it's really good it's really good don't expect your normal action-packed movie with uh, a, a lot of scares along the way no this one is definitely more cerebral and even a slow burn but I think it holds your attention along the way. But I'm glad that I didn't remember any of it because when I was watching, I was thinking, is there going to be, like, is a scare going to be coming here? This movie's more about, like, atmosphere. The cinematography in this movie, and really just the location, because it takes place in Roosevelt Island in New York. And some of my uh, New York viewers might know this, this island. I know that Howard Stern grew up in Roosevelt. And I think it's a lower income community. It's definitely portrayed that way in this movie. You know, this movie's so dreary and so gloomy, and if you pay attention to it, I think just about every scene in this movie has some form of water. It could be precipitation. It could be literal water on the, on the floor. It could be raining outside. You know, it's a heavy element throughout the movie. I mean, I'm even getting vibes from like Seven sometimes in this movie, because Seven is a movie that is just bathed in like a rainy atmosphere. Now, can we talk about maintenance for a sec? Yes, I am a maintenance guy. That is my normal day job, okay? I've been in maintenance. I mean, I've been in construction for pretty much a good 30 years, all right? But in the past like couple years, I got into like apartment maintenance. And I find, I find myself enjoying it because you get to cover every skill set that, that you can think of. You know, your plumbing, your electrical, your, your carpentry, and especially HVAC down here in Florida. I do a good amount of that. I could not help but, you know, kind of pick this movie apart as I'm watching it. And I will say, I think it covers its bases maintenance-wise. You know, I'm pretty much like Pete Postlewaite's character in this movie, except I care about my residence. I, I try to make sure I do a good job. And that leak <laughs> that she has in that room, eventually he comes and he knocks it out. Now, if I was dealing with that, if we can talk shop for a second here, I, I never open up a wall until I find out where the leak is coming from first, uh, unless it's coming from inside the wall. So you got to cancel some things out. And a lot of times uh, I want to know, did it just rain? Could that have caused it? Or did the, the resident upstairs uh, run some water? Which they did that in this movie. That's why she was getting the leak is because the rain upstairs or the, the, not the rain, but the water upstairs. You know, but you can't rule out uh, an actual rain leak because it's it's freaking raining all the time, right? So you got two possibilities there, all right? But long story short, they eventually end up changing out the pipe. But it's fun when you watch a movie that has your specific, I guess, job or skill set in it, so you can kind of critique it. But that does play a part in the movie because she's constantly dealing with this landlord that's an asshole. You know, th these guys, they, they give you lip service constantly until you threaten them with, um, a lawsuit, which is what happens in this movie. And then you got the maintenance guy that says, I can't do that. Uh, we have to call a plumber for that particular portion of the job. So they keep passing the buck over and over and over. And the biggest crime is that the, the landlord tells the resident, talk to the maintenance guy. That should never happen. The, the, the landlord should always say, I got it. I'll take care of it. I will call the maintenance guy. He will be over there. You know, I was like, what the hell is going on? 
But that's not a critique on the movie because that shit happens. It really happens. Now let's talk about the horror of this movie. And I think mostly it's the visual, you know, it's the cinematography, it's the aesthetic, but it's more uh, character based. Uh, it's drama based. It's a slow burn. You're really dealing with Dahlia and all her issues that she's having. You know, she's got this divorce that she's dealing with and it's not a friendly divorce at all for most of the movie. They're constantly back and forth with each other, trying to be a good mother in the process. She doesn't talk bad about the father, but she's also dealing with life and you know trying to get this, this leak problem fixed in her apartment, and it just seems to get worse and worse and worse. And then she's dealing with her past and her mother leaving her. Jennifer Connelly, I usually don't talk about acting in movies unless it's just either really bad or really, really, really good. Okay, why waste your time? And I can tell you right now, Jennifer Connelly is flat out amazing. I think Jennifer Connelly is one of those actresses that is so uh, gifted because she has this, this kind of mystery about her. You know, there's a darkness there to her. You can see it behind the eyes. She's able to handle emotion quite well, but then she can crack this pretty smile that, you know, the sun will come out immediately as soon as she does it, you know? She's very easy on the eyes too, all right? But this movie does not depend on scares. It completely leans into the story, and thank God the story is compelling because if it wasn't, then uh, it wouldn't be as effective. Uh, I can compare this movie heavily to Rosemary's Baby because Rosemary's Baby, again, it doesn't depend on scares. There's very little scares in that movie, but you're dealing with psychological horror. Uh, this character that is just constantly being beaten down by everybody around her in Rosemary's Baby. And you're dealing with this character in Dark Water, Dahlia, who is just constantly plagued with everything that life is throwing at her. And she's got this landlord uh, and this, this ex-husband and this maintenance man. And even the problems with her daughter in school, you know. All this stuff is just coming at her, and I think it's so relatable. I think a lot of people deal with this stuff. You know, life doesn't let up; it just keeps uh, pounding on you. Luckily, she has a lawyer played by Tim Roth who cares very much about her. You know, he, he sees something in her, even though you can tell he's like bombarded with cases. He wants to help her out, and luckily, she has somebody in her corner. Now, uh, this is a section where I'm definitely going to talk about the, the final act. Uh, so, spoilers here, big time. And I definitely want to talk about this stuff because it is eerily similar to a case that happened eight years after this movie. The Cecil Hotel murders. So, in the movie Dark Water, right, we find out that Natasha was actually drowned uh, or she fell into this big water tank upstairs. And so, um, I guess her essence, her bodily... Um, fluids or whatever got mixed in with the water and not only did it um, find itself into the, uh, the apartment complex but also it caused this haunting you know with the, the character Natasha talking to Dahlia's daughter and by the way the same actress plays Natasha and the young Dahlia and that's because Dahlia sees herself in Natasha so it's kind of from her point of view and then there's something that happens at the very end of the movie involving Dahlia in the bathtub, which we'll get to that in just a second. But first, I want to talk about the Cecil Hotel. I saw this documentary on Netflix, I think it was a couple years ago, about this um, young woman. There was like this camera footage of her in the elevator, and the elevator malfunctioned. And in this movie, the elevator malfunctions multiple times. That's the only like footage that they could find of this young woman in the Cecil Hotel. And then she ends up dying in the exact same fashion as Natasha did in this movie. And if you want to go even further, Dahlia's name, Dahlia, is, you know, the, the Black Dahlia murder. I think there's some similarities there with this case as well. So it's one of those things where how could all of this be so similar in this movie that took place... Um, more than 10 years if you count the, the Japanese movie. It's just one of those really interesting things. And then lastly, I wanna talk about, uh, because you never really know where this movie's gonna end. You think that that wraps the whole story up and it could end right here, but no. Then, after everything's taken care of in the apartment, she's going to move, but then she's giving Ceci a bath and then Natasha takes over in the bath and closes the door and so she pretty much makes a deal with Dahlia. And so Dahlia dies because she says, I, I will be your mother if you just let my daughter live. So she gives her own life for her daughter. 
So she doesn't want to do to uh, Ceci what her mother did to her. There's this beautiful scene in the movie in the elevator as Ceci is going down because she gets trapped in the elevator when the father gets out. And you don't really see uh, Jennifer Connelly's face fully. Uh, you just see mostly her hands. And she's just comforting her daughter and, and telling her, I'm always here. You, you will always be okay. So just a beautiful ending. Almost sends a tear to your eye, actually. This movie's not scary at all. So if you're going into this movie for just straight up horror, it's not going to happen. All right, You're not going to come out of this movie with chills down your spine, even though it does deal with death. Uh, but I think it's just a great drama, and I think it's set in a, like a horror environment, you know? Just visually, this is what a horror movie would look like, but it just happens to not depend on scares. And also, this is a slow burn, so I think the first half of the movie, you might, you know, especially if you're expecting a horror movie, you might be a, a little bit disappointed. You're like, what? when are they going to get to the horror? But I let that go pretty early on in the movie just because I was invested in the story and what was going on. So I would definitely give Dark Water a purchase worthy. Really, really enjoyed this movie for sure. Glad I finally gave it another watch. So thanks to uh, Bronson for requesting this one. Definitely check it out guys. Also be sure to come over to Killer Flicks where we talk horror all day and every day and on Fridays we do Free Fall Fridays. Follow me at Drum Dums on all my socials. Support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee. And guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Drum Dumb out.